Hello, everybody. I hope this recording is working out because um, this is my first time actually using Zoom um, to show you a tutorial on how to write an abstract. So now you will probably see my screen, how to write an abstract. Let's start. Let's start with the definition of an abstract and the structure of an abstract. So basically, point one is that your abstract is just a mini version of a longer paper. And the paper is used for a variety of reasons and purposes. For instance, to quickly report your research, in this case, your interview, to um, provide an abstract for a journal article, you guys are very familiar from reading journal articles in our classes or for submission for a conference proceeding or any other in-depth analysis of a specific subject matter. Point two, it is typically restricted to 150 words or up to 500, 150 to 500 words. In our case, it is 500. The abstract does not include the references. It includes three to five keywords, which are actually helping researchers to locate your paper through search engines. Point three, it helps to quickly ascertain the paper's purpose. In your case, why did you conduct your interview? What was the purpose? And it is the first interaction with the reader. So since this is the first interaction with the reader, we are coming to point four. This is also your first impression to help provide a compelling preview, like a Hollywood movie that you are using as a trailer. And you're telling the reader what to expect if they decide to read or not to read the longer version. Who has time to read long papers? We all need to know what the longer paper entails so that we can make a decision to move on. And finally, point five, which is important for your writing process, it needs to include key points. So for our instruction, you need to include an introduction, introducing the topic of your study, trauma versus parenting, stress, joys, and so on, whatever you think is the theme of your interview data. The goal, what do you want to examine further. What is your focus? Methods. Clearly, this was an interview. You interviewed one single person. Now you have to tell me who that person is, African-American father, uh, single mother, and so on. Results. Just the key, key, key main points that are connected to the introduction of your abstract. Discussion. What do the results really mean? What is interpretation? And what are your future recommendations, future, how should future studies look like? An example, you have seen an abstract. This is not new to you. Our upcoming journal article, The Impact of Electronic Media Violence, Scientific Theory and Research. You see, this is a very small abstract. Based on journals, the editor will tell you how long the abstract should be. This is probably 120 words or 150. I haven't counted it, so maybe you can do it. You see, there's an abstract right following after the affiliation of the author. And then the key words. In this case, youth violence, media, video games, television. Even though we haven't read the long article or the short abstract, we already have a feeling, ah, this is a paper I could maybe use for my future study because I'm not interested in technology and video gaming and how that it might affect violence in a specific population, youth. Now, I've provided you in the instructions two samples of a student who actually did this exercise last summer with, with me in Psych 350. Well, as you can see, abstracts require many, many drafts. So this is just her last draft before she actually produced her final abstract. And I think the author did a wonderful job. And with her permission, I actually am able to share her final results. Please read them carefully. But let's look at them together. 
please take it out if you have a chance. And let's look at the whole abstract piece by piece. You'll see my comments next to the sentences. So parenting is a rewarding experience, yet it is not without challenges occurring when demands of parenting surpass available resources for effective parenting. Boom, this is the intro of your topic. Now, she also is raising some controversy. It is not without challenges. Yes, we know parenting is very rewarding. Everybody loves their children, but it has challenges, especially when the demands of parenting surpass available resources. So she clearly is going to put some focus on resources and the demands of parenting in her paper. That's what we can expect as readers. So next, she has a problem statement, which is called a thesis. Parental stress intensifies when the stresses are beyond the parent's control. So she tried to prove this before she conducted her interview. Actually, she had some kind of prediction what would happen. She believed that parenting can be very stressful. Next, she has some literature background. In particular, studies suggest a connection between racial identity and race-related stress among middle-class African-Americans. African-American parents must racially socialize their children, preparing them for a society that is prejudiced. So, after she has actually collected her data, she saw a big theme, and she told me she wants to focus on black parenting and how society stigmatizes. I said, wonderful, go for it, but mention it in your literature background. So I suggested some literature for her and she took my advice and she included it in her abstract. Now, next, the purpose of the study. This st study conducted a face-to-face -face interview with a single middle-class African-American father and explored parental involvement and stress that arose when parenting this 11-year-old son with epilepsy and learning disabilities. Boom, she introduces her methodology, face-to-face -face interview, and who her participant was. A father parenting an 11-year-old with specific learning disabilities, in this case, epilepsy, being African-American as another, you know, future of being the participant, like the characteristics, age, she didn't want to include the age, but it's okay. Method, that was the method. So now she goes deeper into the method. The interview was a single middle-class African-American male, age 33. Okay, she mentions the age. Living with his two sons and children's mother. Father volunteered participation and signed a consent form. So this is just procedure. Then the interview consisted of a parental stress scale questionnaire. What kind of measures she used? This item, 18 items self-report scale measured positive and negative themes in parenthood using a five-point Likert scale. So this is just how the questionnaire was structured. And she further includes how her whole interview was structured. 25 closed-ended questions examined social demographic information and five audio tape open-ended questions helped the interviewee discuss joys and challenges of parenting one particular child. So clearly, this is just an introduction of the method. Very brief. Next, she's focusing on the results based on the relevant information she has already provided us. You will see that the paper is flowing. The interviewee had a stress score of 23, which is low on a scale of 18 to 90. In this self-report, the father described that his 11-year-old son had epilepsy, ADHD. Now she's including specific aspects of the learning disabilities and father's perception of being a father. So however, his son was well-adjusted, happy, and joy to be around. Activities they enjoyed were playing, video games. As you can see, these are really the results of some of the questions she asked the father, focusing on challenges and joys of parenting. Now, let's go to the discussion. The interview data reveal an inconsistency in the interview's parental stress score compared to current literature. Now she's putting some critical eye we know from self-reports that people are not always honest. They are biased, especially when we know them. They want to portray us a, a world full of, you know, happy moments rather than stressful moments. So be aware of that. And maybe you raise a critical eye when you look at your data. 
Parents of children with epilepsy in conjunction with learning disabilities are more likely to report higher parental stress than parents of children with epilepsy alone. Fathers of children with epilepsy reported greater parental stress than mothers. Now, she's integrating her results into the bigger literature. High parental stress levels are also reported in middle-class African-American navigating their economic status and racial status. However, most of these studies rely on maternal self-reports. Now, this is a critique to whatever is happening in the current literature. Limitation. In the current study interview, he loved his children. However, work reduced his parenting responsibilities and involvement, which may explain low stress score. Now she's trying to fade to explain, okay, I know from the literature, African-American parents with children who have learning disabilities and and in fact, with epilepsy, have higher levels of stress than parents not having children with learning disabilities, you know, combined with epilepsy. So she's now explaining why she's not finding the same results. Maybe because the father is not really that much involved in parenting the child. Because she also had data showing that he works a lot, and he actually admitted the father in the interview that he um, spent way less time than the mother. But you don't have to mention all that. It's already clear that something is happening here. Now she is talk, Now that she talked about her limitation, she will actually point to future directions. Future studies should include a larger sample of middle-class minorities focusing on how fathers experience parenting and include mothers to compare levels of stress and determine if active involvement increases parental stress. So finally, you see the keywords, black parenting, middle class, African American parenting, parental stress, epilepsy, parental challenges, raising children with learning disabilities. So I hope this was helpful. And please read the instructions, get back to me with questions. Have a wonderful day.